I think a lot of uh, certainly the Brexiteers and certainly people who will in the future fight to uh, stop the UK rejoining uh, the European Union will find, much to their uh, chagrin, that Boris Johnson is inevitably tied very, very much so to Brexit. Um, it is now a, a albatross very hung firmly round his neck. Um, he will never be able to separate it from him and himself. And to be honest, as, as we've seen, Brexit is not going well. It is not working. Our economy is the only one next to Russia, I believe, according to the IMF, that is not going to grow this year. In fact, it is uh, predicted to shrink. And even though a lot of people will say, oh, but you don't understand, Britain beat off the, the, the those last year in, in 2022. You know, well, congratulations, we grew from a negative to another negative. Um, and while it was less, our economy still isn't doing well compared to the economy that has had massive sanctions placed against it. <laughs> and when you compare it to the rest of Europe, you've only got to come to one conclusion. It's the Brexit effect. We have gone over this time and time and time again, why it's going so wrong, why it's going bad. But of course, Boris Johnson, as I've said, tied inexplicably now, forever to Brexit. He will never be able to get away from it. So he has been Put out uh, again, probably very much, and sort of, I suppose, prompted by the Brexiteers, very much so. I suspect to say, "Oh no, you've got to, you've got to sort of put down this gloom mongering uh, about Brexit. You, you've got to sort of, you know, go out there and and be our, you know, booster boy like you always were, Boris. You know, that's your job. Go out and you know, be our cheerleader. You know, go." And of course, Boris Johnson put out his his little video. Um, he made some. Very, very dubious claims. And of course, he very quickly got absolutely torn to shreds. So before we go uh, over that today, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. Of course, do remember to ring the bell as well. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and our updates link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, there is the YouTube Pony Club down below as well and the YouTube Thank You button as well. So as always, let's crack on with this then today. So... Boris Johnson's attempt to silence Brexit gloom mongering is torn apart from the Huff Post. On the third anniversary of Brexit, Boris Johnson has attempted to paint the withdrawal from the EU as a major boost for the UK, but immediately faced pushback over a questionable claim. Taking to Twitter, the former Prime Minister urged people to, quote, shrug off all this negativity and gloom mongering about Brexit, despite the dire warnings about the UK economy. On the same day, the International Monetary Fund said that Britain's productivity will be worse than every other major country in 2023, even Russia, hit by a swinging economic sanctions by the global, by the global community due to its invasion of Ukraine, but will do better. Uh, than the IMF said. Unhinged, the man who formerly led the UK out of the bloc promised the quote, opportunities are huge. Let's shrug off all this negativity and gloom mongering I hear about Brexit. Let's remember the opportunities that lie ahead and the vaccine rollout proves it, he said. In a social media video, he insisted that the UK's coronavirus vaccination rollout was as rapid as it was because we'd taken back control of the Medical Health and Regulatory Agency. We were able to license the vaccine faster than any other European country, and that gave us a crucial edge, he said. So today, on Brexit Day, as we look back at the vaccine rollout, let's also look forward to all the other ways in which we can change our country and our economy for the better. Like how? You were you were Prime Minister, Boris. You you were the man who could have brought about these, these Brexit opportunities and changed our economy and our country for the better. You were Prime Minister. <laughs> Just, what? This is what I've said about all these claims that, you know, oh, Brexit isn't being done properly, or it's being sabotaged. Who's been in charge for the past couple of years? It has been Brexiteers. 
overwhelmingly in charge of this process at every step of the way. And now they are complaining about Boris Johnson's oven-ready Brexit deal that back then they were all backing to the hilt that this was going to be absolutely fantastic. This was going to get Brexit done. <sighs> so, was the vaccine rollout really a Brexit win? Absolutely not. It was not a Brexit win. Fact checkers have repeatedly argued Brexit did not help with the quick expansion of the COVID-19 vaccines. In December of 2020, the Health Secretary Matt Hancock claimed that the process was more easy because of Britain's exit from the EU, saying, we do all the same safety checks and the same processes, but we've been able to speed up how it's done because of Brexit, the Health Secretary said in December. But he was shot down by British officials who made it clear that the strategy had nothing to do with Brexit and took place under European law. At the time, the MRHHA chief executive, Dr. John Runes, said that we have to be able to authorise the supply of this vaccine using provisions under European law, which then remained in place. And Kate Buckingham, head of Johnson's Vaccine Task Force, said that the speedy approval of the, uh, of the, in the UK had nothing to do with Brexit. He said that the UK's faster approval of the vaccines was to do with the decision-making process at the British MRHA that the staff had prepared well. Brigham said it had nothing to do with Brexit, but we were organised. And of course, you've got other people laying into him uh, for this, all of this. And of course, Johnson remarks also contrast with recent polling, suggesting the growing unhappiness with the way that Brexit has turned out and disputes continuing over the Northern Ireland Protocol. While the IMFs and the World Economic Outlook did not mention Brexit, economists did link the dire forecasting to the exiting of the single market with the UK's largest trading partner. Paul Johnson, the, the director of the Institute for Fiscal Studies think tank, told the BBC Radio 4 Today programme, there are a few things which are affecting us more than other countries. One in particular is the loss of people from our labour force. We've, had quite, we've heard quite a lot about the fact that we've lost over 500,000 plus people from work, people retiring early, immigrants not coming in from the European Union, and so on. That is not affecting any other country in Europe. And so Boris Johnson, as we said, always will be now linked to forever and always with Brexit. And I think this is ultimately going to be his legacy. Um, and I would not be surprised when we, again, go through this entire rejoining process that Boris Johnson, or at least certainly, as we've seen, the Brexiteers will always try and make Boris Johnson the somehow central figure of uh, of these arguments. But I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to sort of serve them well. I really don't think it is. I think Johnson's reputation has been tarnished. He's been proven time and time again to be a liar, as we've seen here. Making that claim is not a, a true or factual one. Um, you know, will it eventually sink him? I, I I think so. You know, we can all see it. You know, the, the economists are always saying, look, you know, like what we had there, what's affecting every other country and us what's the difference it's brexit we're not in the we're not in the single market customs union anymore we have turned our back on our biggest trading partner and as we said back then what did you think was going to happen and i you know I, i'm fed up of having to go you know we warned you this would happen but of course we did, and we were ignored, and that was just quote, project fear. And now, of course, we're seeing the tide start to change, and the mood music start to change. Of oh, don't worry, we weren't talking about immediate effects, you know. Don't worry, guys. Five or ten years, Brexit, it's all going to be sorted because you know currently they're not doing it right. To the more hardcore ones who are like, ah, you know, Brexit's being sabotaged to the bizarre conspiratorial claims of Daniel Hanan. Um, yeah. Uh, we're going back in the direction. It's it's unavoidable. <laughs> it's literally unavoidable. We we will be one day back in the European Union. It'll take some time, but you know, that's that's it. Um, like I say, we'll probably be back certainly quicker, certainly the single market customs union. But that's the path we're going back on because that is the path that we set 
that the, the, the Brexiteers set us on because they had no plan. They had no idea how to do it. And of course, their real plan, their real agenda, what we saw with Liz Truss try to do, what we've heard several of the key Brexiteers like you know Patrick Minford come out and say that they wanted a complete and utter deregulatory uh, less UK. They want to get rid of the NHS. No one in their right mind would ever ever accept that i think even you know hardcore leave voters would never ever accept that because one of the things i've said and i think we're going to find out very soon is that a lot of people in the uk really did not understand just how important regulations really were so as always thank you very much for watching and of course we'll see you all next time